Welcome back. We're down here at the river today. And today we're just going to do some sifting. Because I know a lot of you, uh, a lot of you like that. Just to see what we can find here with the sifter. I brought the sifter and the shovel. And we even have the uh, scooper sifter for when the sand gets a little bit low. Then we can use it. So I'm going to clear some of this mud out so I can get the sifter down in the water. And we'll get started after that. Now this has been a hot spot in the past. I have found several points here and this water has been up all winter long. So I'm hoping this hot spot has replenished itself. I feel a lot of gravel down under there while I'm uh, cleaning out that mud. Oh, it sounds real good. There's a lot of gravel under there. This is sounding real good. Now here's what we're looking for when we're sifting this sand. This sand seems to be about, it's thinned down a lot since last year, seeing it was under that water all winter. But we're looking for this hard packed clay layer. And we've hit it about six or eight inches below the sand. So that's not much digging. Now I don't know how deep it's gonna be when we get farther up in here and over there. But for right now, it's not too bad. And there's a lot of stone under here. Everything wants to lay down on that base layer, that clay layer. When this is all underwater, it's like a slurry. So all the heavier stuff works its way down through the sand and lays on that clay. Look right here, there's stuff starting to come out already. There's a flake that looks like it's been worked on. Maybe a, th a thinning flake or something. But if I'm finding flakes already and staying, that's very good news because I had all this cleared out last year. See, this was only a half a sifter full. I just wanted to show you how much stuff is showing up in just a half a sifter full. All these stones that were not here. We had all this out last year. It's hard to tell what we'll find here. There's a piece of a melted bottle or something. Piece of hematite, it's not rubbed or anything. Here's a flake. We're getting a lot of flakes. There's another flake. It's looking good. As Soon as I get something in here, I'll let you know. We'll check it out and we'll go over it. We got our first point in here. And it is a dandy. I'm about uh, three screens in right now. You can see the sand's getting a little deeper as we go up. I'm hoping it thins out a bit. Look down in here. Oh, wow. You can't miss it right there. Look at that. It's what they call a night island. It's around, I'd say, maybe 12 to 1500 years old and i believe this was a real bow and arrow point you can tell how thin it is and just the way it's made very thin very narrow very nice point it's actually made on a flake on the back where they've tried to thin it got it a little too thin it looks like i'm not sure what this was named after probably a landmark somewhere where they were first uh, documented or found it's called a night island i believe that's what that is and the reason I think this is a bow and arrow point, just because how thin it is. And the uh, distance between the notches is very narrow to go on like a smaller arrow shaft. And being the age of this, around 1500, 1200 years ago, uh, they think that's when the bow showed up in the United States, somewhere around that time. And we don't know how the bow got here. We don't know if it was uh, invented by an inventor and in Native American here in the United States, or uh, maybe, who knows, you know, maybe one washed up out California on the Pacific shore somewhere that washed over from uh, Italy or somewhere like that. Somebody figured it out like that. We have no clue, but that is a, uh, a bow and arrow point, Night Island. I brought my case with me just in case we find some. But there's the first one. 
very sweet and it's still early out so let's get back at it We've got a lot of sifting to do I was just getting ready to start sifting again look at this and uh, I can't remember your name guy but you asked me the other day if I ever found any marbles so look right here here we go It's a nice swirl marble, but it's got some chipping out of it here. Too bad. Oh, that would have been a dandy. Still pretty nice looking. I got one. Check this out. Right there. You see that? It's a small one. Looks like it's made out of Flint Ridge from Ohio. Let's pick it up. It's got a little base tip out of it. Look at that. It's another bow and arrow tip. A nice little one. Look at this. You see how that's shaped? How it's rounded on the left side and it's kind of concave on the right? I thought that was broken at first, but it's not. When I flipped it over, those are individual flakes that were taken off of there. It is not broken. Uh, there's a story behind all these points. Now this is just a theory, but you gotta think about these things, you know? I bet that this person was uh, making arrows either he shot one or it just broke the shaft and uh maybe he broke about six inches off the shaft left it in there and used it like a little exacto knife i don't know but it sure is shaped like he used it like a knife and it's not broken like that it's worked that way and you know it might sound funny but there's a there's a story behind this i bet you my theory is this guy was making arrow shafts one at a time putting them down on his side on the ground there his buddy probably walked in stepped on it guy probably punched him in the nose you know then he figured well you know i'll just break a few inches and leave it in the shaft and use it like a little knife you know like a little exacto knife that's a nice one that's two bow and arrow tips and a marble let's get back at it this is looking good I'm gonna work my way off to the sides here a little bit this side a little bit that side because there's a gully right in here I know this because I've had all this sand removed before sifting here uh, probably a year and a half ago and when this water's up over this and it's all in a slurry everything heavy falls to the lowest spot and that gully is probably stretched from that bush over yeah, right around in here there's a there's a like a, a ridge that runs up through there but you can't tell that when all the sands up here because the sands always going to be level on the top but one way you can tell where there's a low spot and a high spot look here you see how there's no plants at all on this sand no plants until you get right in here and these plants start showing up right in here there's a high spot right in there there's a high spot runs right through here because those plants dig down in the dirt, see? They won't grow in just the sand. Every time these barges go by, it sucks the water way out. Look at that. Sucked it out like six feet. We got two here in the screen. One of them's a little bit broken, but they're really nice. We're on like the bow and arrow tips today. Look at this. Can you see it in there? There's one round in there, and there's one over here. Let's pick the broken one up first. I could see the tip was busted. Oh, that would have been beautiful. Look at that. Just broken off the tip right there. 
also made out of Flint Ridge material from Ohio. Very long trek to get this stuff. Let's pick this other one up. It looks better. Right there. That's a triangle. One little small tip off the corner, but that's a dandy. This one's made out of Brush Creek Chert. It's a place in uh, Crooksville, Ohio. Long trek from here to get this stuff. And the reason this stuff comes from so far away is there's just not much uh, flint in this general area. You can find it, but it's just small cobbles usually, about baseball size, softball size. One broke and one nice Crooksville triangle. You can imagine the first people to walk up and discover that flint quarry or these flint quarries. They probably tried to cover it up and keep it secret. Probably knocked chunks of it off and brought it back to the tribe, you know. Traded it for food and other stuff. Until somebody got sneaky and followed them and found out where they were getting it. Then the secret was out. I figured the first tribes to claim those quarries, they probably had guards posted on there in case anybody tried to steal anything. And you can go over there to Flint Ridge right now and dig your own stuff. There's pits everywhere. You can take a bucket in there and uh, chisel and knock off your own stuff. And the people that own the uh, farm there will charge you so much per pound. I think it's on the honor system. You put your money in the box and you take your flint. There ain't nothing in this screen, but I wanted to show you something. An example right here there's a couple flakes there's another flake of Crooksville Brush Creek Chert but you see this flint piece right here it's a small flint cobble and you can see how they have uh, tried to make something out of that they've taken flakes off and tried to thin it down I say they broke it on the top they were probably trying to make a triangle out of it but that's an example of one of the small pieces you find here now it is a small piece and you can find them bigger but when they were hard up for stuff they probably tried to use the smallest stuff they could and y'all ain't gonna believe this i got one right on the shovel i can see it it's white probably flint ridge this has only happened to me a couple of times ever look at this right there i can see it i rubbed it a little bit let's pull it out of here didn't even make it to the sifter oh it's nice looking oh yes look at that it's another Flint Ridge bird point it's a dandy when I say bird point I mean it was shot with a bow on an arrow not a dart it wasn't thrown with an atlatl very nice one there it's funny that we find all these uh, bow and arrow tips down on this south end of the beach. Now this stretch I look is probably, I don't know, four or five hundred meters long. And right from here south, I find a lot of uh, bow and arrow tips, newer stuff. But if you go up that way, 200 meters, you find old stuff, you know, nine, ten thousand year old stuff. Now there's not as much of it, but it's older than down here. And this land above is flat land for several hundred meters. Um, people lived there for thousands and thousands of years. They're still living up there. Man, we're killing it on these bow and arrow tips today. That's four good ones. Well, one broke one and a marble. Now, I know that I've explained this before, but uh, some new viewers might be wondering how all these arrowheads get down here under this sand on the beach. You can't see it now because of the weeds. But right behind those weeds is a bank and it goes straight up and down. It's just cut from where the water has hit it so many times. And this beach here never used to be here. 10,000 years ago, we would have been standing under about 10 feet of dirt. We would have been buried. Because that flat land that's all up above went over our head and down like this to the river that was down in there in the valley below but when they put the dams in the river now it's just like a big lake and every time the water goes high it goes up against that hillside 
eats a little bit away and big chunks of that field fall down here onto the riverbank. And as the water's dropping, everything's in a slurry, like I said. So the big stuff will sink down to the bottom. And as the water drops and the waves are hitting, it works its way down here to the water's edge until it can't go any farther. Now the normal water level is about right in here at the bottom of that bush. And the water is down a little bit. Most of the points you find, or artifacts that you find, will be right at the low water level. That's the best place to dig. That's why I always like to start there and work up. The farther you get up on the beach, the stuff's scattered out. You got less of a chance of finding it than you do down here where it's all concentrated. And how all this sand gets on the beach, some people seem to think that this sand layer was always here under the ground and it just goes right into the bank there that the natives were sitting on a sandy beach. But that ain't right. There's sand in the earth that falls off of that bank, see? And as it gets concentrated down here, the dirt and stuff washes down the river, but the sand is heavier, so it builds up here on the beach. And you can dig it out and put it out here in the water as you're sifting. And we got a little peninsula started out here right now. We can walk way out here and do our sifting in deeper water. But once this sand gets built up on this beach, it's hard to get it out of here. You can shovel all this off and put it all out there. But as soon as these big barges and waves come by, boosh, they throw it all back in here. Because we had this dug out right here to the clay layer, and there's already sand covering it. But I know there's nothing there right now because we already got it. If you're wondering about my sifter, I don't use a uh, lift sifter very much because it's hard on your back after a while. I got this one up on skids. So it sits up in the air a little bit. And I'll show you. See this tow boat coming along here? He's going to make some waves. And when you got waves, that's the best time to be down here sifting with this type of sifter. Because you don't have to lift it or anything like that. You just put it in the water and let it sit there. And the waves will sift it for you as you're shoveling it in until it builds up on the bottom. Then all you have to do is move it over a couple inches, keep shoveling into it. As long as there's waves, there's not too many today. Hey, that's automatic sifting right there. We just pulled this out of the sand. I believe that it's a grinding stone, you know? For grinding corn or something you can see scratches on I don't know if you can see those I hope you can they've ground it like this it's all rounded around the outside edge here and flat on the bottom I would say that's a uh, corn grinding stone now I've never found the uh, what they call the matate part of it but I've found several of the grinding stones themselves those bigger ones, they just get busted up too easily. Found a nice flint napping stone or hammer stone here. Look at this thing. They have got the cortex beat all off of this. Besides in uh, certain places, this little flat spot right there on the end, there's a little piece left where they were hammering with this, see? They just got it beat. They've used every area of this almost. Now they couldn't use this little flat place here, but they did use up around that ridge, you can see. Just hammering with it. Flint napping stain, making arrowheads or knives or something, or whatever they were pounding with that. That is a really nice one. You know, a lot of people just think, you know, these people just sat around, made arrowheads all the time and hunted. They had lives, these were normal people. It's hard to tell what they were hammering with that thing. We're about, I don't know, two hours later. We found some broken ones and a lot of flakes. I'm working my way across here and I'm getting around that bush over there too because I have found a nice one over there look how much stone is in these screens there's a Tonka wheel throw all your big stains out right there's flake several flakes in here Oh my gosh oh my god I figured as many flakes as we find look at this holy smokes them down 
Oh, yes! It looks like a, like a Fort Ancient knife. Probably 600 years old, and it's all there. Oh, that's killer, man. I like that. Really nice one. Little knife blade. We better check this better. There's all kinds of flakes in here. I mean, they're everywhere. Look at them. That's what we want to see in every screen, all these flakes. And that's just uh, debutage from where they were making knives and arrowheads and flint tools to work with. Some of this stuff is really small. They're not all big like that knife. Some of them triangles can be very tiny. You want to look this stuff over real well. There's an old shell. Really old shell. I think this is called a like a three, three hump warty back. Something like that. But I've never seen one alive around here. I only find the shells. Now the larger uh, muscle shells, I find those. I've seen those crawling around. But I've never seen one of these uh, warty back ones. Or whatever they're called. There's flakes everywhere in this screen. I loaded this thing up about four or five times before I shook it down. Well, I shake it down periodically to get the sand settled out. And then I just put more stuff on top until it gets so full of stone like this that you have to look at, see. I don't see anything else in this one. A lot of flakes and a very nice knife blade. Let's get back at it. Oh yes, we got, well some of them are chipped up, but we got a few whole ones and a really nice hammer stone here. We got one. Look here. That is some odd flint. I think this is a local type flint here. I've found flakes made of this before, but uh, I don't think I've ever found a whole point made out of that stuff. It's kind of, a, I don't know, tan and black. Looks like a Hopewell point. Probably 1500 years old. Very nice. I shook this down again, and there's another one in there. I can see a work piece. Long, narrow thing, like maybe a drill or something, right here. Oh, it's all there. Looks like a sharpened down Adena point. Way sharpened down. They got their use out of that one. The stem would have been about that much of it. But the blade is so sharpened down, it's just like a little spike now. It's an Adena. Maybe 2,000 to 2,500 years old, maybe. Cool. A little bit older than what we've been finding here today. Yeah, we're doing good today. And that's got some chipping on it. It's resharpened, but still that's nice. And this one's really resharpened. I don't know if they would have used that for a drill bit, maybe. To drill a big hole, get a hole started. I don't know. Or just a spike. Our hole's starting to dry up as we go that way because I think we're getting up on top of that lip. And it runs right through here. I don't know if I got anything out of that hole around that bush over there, but uh, I shoveled two places. I don't know where it came from, those points, but could have been here, could have been there, and I took a, dug a hole up there too. So it doesn't matter now. They're in the case. I'm going to try to find one more thing. It's getting late. 
I'll stay a little bit longer. Then we'll have to get out of here. Funny thing is, we haven't found any pottery uh, sherds today. I refer to them as sherds now because I was corrected in the comments. A piece of pottery broken is a shirt. A piece of glass or, you know, a rock, a broken piece of a rock or flint like that, that's a shard. So from here on out, the pottery pieces will be referred to as shirts. Next time, I want to go on up the beach and see if we can't find some older stuff at the older site. It's not as plentiful as the newer stuff, but it's a lot funner to find that old stuff. The older it is, the funner it is. I'm going to go down here where the sand isn't quite so deep and uh, use a scooper sifter a little bit and try and find something for a couple short videos. The shorts don't do really well in pay wise they only make nine cents for a thousand views but i had one go over a million views that made me a hundred bucks so that's good we'll see what we can find we had a heck of a day heck of a day we'll see you on the next long one